Welcome to the Progressing Lives Everywhere podcast, brought to you by the Amoria Bond Group. In each episode, we feature prominent business leaders and industry experts sharing their personal experiences and inspiring anecdotes of what progression means to them and insights into their specialist fields, as well as tools, techniques and practical steps we can all take to progress lives everywhere. Welcome to the Progressive Lives Everywhere podcast. I'm this week's host, Andy Barrow, and my guest today is our very own CEO, David Evington. 27 year career spanning a variety of industries, consultancy, project management, recruitment, sales, horses, dogs, cats, snakes, family, wife, kids. He's a busy man for sure. So to get 10, 15 minutes with him today to learn a bit about his motivations, his mindset, how he approaches the day today is uh, a great pleasure. Welcome, David. Thanks very much, Andy. Pleasure to have you. Um, so yeah, what we always like to do on this current series is start off with a little bit about your morning routine. You know, how do you set yourself up to have that, that best day to progress as best possible? Um, I can't profess to be in the, um, the model uh, Robin Sharma 5 a.m. club um, every day. I do. Um, I do get up at five thirty every day. That's my That's my kind of time mark, and um, and I like to kick my day off. It's pretty habitual um, with a mm-hmm. with a cup of coffee. Um, it's one of the times you know with my with my wife where um, you know we can uh, have a conflab about the day ahead and you know what we've got going on, and um, and then I've got two. Um, very demanding working cocker spaniels who are who are looking at me to to finish that first coffee Stand and, out. and take them out for a walk. I'm really lucky. I live in the countryside, <clears throat> so um, you know it's literally out the house, out the gate, and uh, up into fields. And um, I uh, I take the opportunity to to have at least half an hour out with them, which is a combination of benefits for me in the morning because aside from the fact that it's always um, good to to get out into the outdoors it's great for been proven to be great for um, reducing stress levels um, it's mm-hmm. also um, really good to use that time uh, to do some thinking you know they're pretty easy to look after um, running around all over the place of course I just I just walk the route with them and um, and in the midst of all of that stuff you know I I do the things that are important to me in that in that half an hour, and that that can often be a reflection of the day ahead. You know, that can yeah. often be a reflection of the week ahead, uh, depending on what's going on. And um, I do stop, you know, a lot to think about um, gratitude to um, nice. you know to the the situation that m- me and my family are, are fortunate to be in, and you know, recognise you know, the things I've got rather than the things I don't. And uh, yeah. and I think, and I think you know, making sure that I'm replenishing really, um, you know, that, that daily mindset, you know, to, to ensure that, you know, I'm running at my day with a, a sense of power and control, which is really important to me, you know, to be in a situation where before I've even kicked my day off, you know, I've been able to really get my head straight and get, you know, get my mindset in the right, in the right form. I'm not telling you that I'll get out of bed and I feel that way every day. Um, what, what I'm telling you is that after a coffee and after a walk with the dogs, more often than not, you know, I've managed to, to walk out anything that I might, you know, be carrying and um, would find it exceptionally important. Of course, following on from that, you know, you refer to the, the whole family set up and all the rest of it. You know, I've got um, two kids, to uh to get to school and um and my wife she's also a professional so you know we uh, divide and conquer so the mornings tend to be around you know as i said it's pretty habitual it's a you know a kind of very considerate approach to making sure that i'm i'm getting myself into the into the right mindset but also we're organized <laughs> so so good mornings tend to follow good prep the night before and, yeah. um, and and actually you know making sure that all things are ready for the kids and making sure all things are ready for us and you know all that sort of stuff 
there's always a bit of organising to go. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that um, you know. I wouldn't try to say that um, I'm robotically good at it. Um, it's just that there is a method, and I do like to follow the method. And and you know, habitually, some things are a lot easier to do than than others. Mm. Mm. I think I think the uh, the night before part is quite telling. You know, I think I've heard that um, in Matthew McConaughey's book, his new book, Green Lights. He talks about one of his big green lights is if you're going to get up early, get the coffee pot on the night before. Get yeah, if you're going for a run, get the vest out ready for the run. Yeah, and, and it sounds like it's quite a deliberate, calm morning as opposed to what you imagine most people's family mornings. Mine probably two of the two or three of the five days is. It's more reactive. It's busy. You know, it sounds like you've deliberately set it off in a calm fashion to set up the rest of the day. Yeah, I think I think genuinely, you know, I I feel like to to be in control of the things you know that you know are coming is um, is part of that kind of calm cool. setting because mm. and 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 also backing yourself on the variables right because i think ultimately you learn over time that you can respond well to situations that aren't in your control and um, yeah. and i think so i think where we can i'm not, as again i'm not i'm not trying to say this happens like this in, in in every evening and every day but where we can we'll prep in advance and and aim to get the benefit of that the following day you know i'm sure you'll think of those times in your life where you'll um, bask in splendid glory of having done all your preparation and, you know, things going according to plan. And, you know, you get that moment of realisation that this is what the nirvana is of, of being ready, you know, and having done the things that you set out to do. Of course, like most things in life, you can, you can learn how to shortcut all of that and, um, and do things on the fly. And I think... Sure. You know, we probably live between those places. If I was, if yeah. I was being, you know, frank. Yeah, I think that's that would be quite typical of a busy family, right? Yeah. Um, well, you you do you you do tend to, I might, from my own observation, tend to operate from quite a place of calm and clarity. You do seem that way. There, you know, uh, regarding regardless <laughs> of the demanding schedule, you always seem quite. Yeah, I'm clear. I'm calm. I'm ready to tackle the situation. Is that has that been a, a a consistent theme for a long time, or has it taken a while to develop that calmness? Um, I think. Well, first things first. Before I answer the question directly, um, all of this comes with a sense of teamwork. You know, I don't get much done without my partner. You know, it's an important mm. it's an important thing. So even with our work, you know, we we plan ahead in terms of each other's diaries and you know again that comes back to that sense of of being in control so i think between the two of us we make a brilliant team you know as parents um because we're both professionals we understand the demands of each other's jobs and um, and and that in itself kind of t- tempers some of the things that sometimes is hard you know to manage in a in a home setting um yeah but but I think, you know, I don't really subscribe. I think there's some things that, you know, I'm very mindful of, which is a lot of people fall into the trap of externalising yeah. the things that yeah, happen. We're all guilty. Yeah. And and I don't I don't subscribe to it. Um, you know, I don't believe in fate or luck. Um, you know, I don't believe in other people, you know making my day bad or you know this is this is all about really um controlling the controllable it took me some time to realize it and apply it um Mm. but but ultimately i'm i'm at a sense of calm genuinely even when things are you know going to the wall to a certain extent because you you know I've got a bit of experience, so you end up in a situation that over time you start realising, even if you're not particularly well equipped for a scenario, you know, because of experience um, and being a subject matter a matter expert in something, history will tell you that you were faced with something before that you didn't know about, and and you got through it, right? So I kind of, I kind of, I kind of like to think that in my day ahead. If my day is going to be interesting, there'll be a mix of those things. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't just want a day where 
everything goes tickety boo because I quite like problems. I quite like fixing problems. I quite like you know being able to respond to it. So yeah, I suppose to a certain extent, um, over time, you know, I've 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 kind of learned that's the way it's going to be. So I'm a, I'm a bit more, um, I guess I take the time to to be to be mindful that I I, I can come at my time every day in situations with a degree of calmness. I used to describe it a bit differently, um, mm. which won't mean something to some people. There's a, um, in London, there's a um, particular tourist spot, Nelson's Column. It used to be absolutely, you know, mad with pigeons flying around. And it was very yeah. popular for a particular genre of filming where you would see somebody doing these time these time capture films where somebody would stand still and they would film everybody moving past them and the pigeons flying around and you know everything was blurring and so I, just, I, used, to describe, I used to describe that's how I feel you know in those scenarios I feel like a sense of calmness when when there's a bit of madness going on because I feel I feel you know I feel like I can if you slow down things sometimes, you can go mm. faster, conversely, um, yeah. and yeah, yeah, you, know, yeah. you can see things that you need to see, and you'll often find, as a result, um, you know, you can you can make better decisions. Nice, no, yes, I guess, yeah, it's, all, yeah, it's uh, touching on the idea of a little bit, I guess, of uh, a conductor or an orchestra. Yeah, if it's going on all around you, you've got to, you've got to maintain some poise and, and still execute. Um, but. From from a motivation perspective, how do you handle dips or maintain that level of motivation? You know, do, do you use fitness? Do you use hobbies? Do you use mindfulness? Is, is there anything like that? I think there's a common theme. Um, you know, if I'm if I'm looking for a replenishment, you know, and we we all have dips in motivation, whether whether one likes to admit it or not. Um, for sure, yeah. I find I'm a I'm a like a super fan of being outdoors. Um, yeah. You know, I, I I grew up in the country. I've, I've always worked in towns and cities, and and travelled a lot and stuff. But it it always it always comes back to, you know, some sense of calm calmness from being outdoors. How that mm. how I apply myself in that setting. Um, you know, used to be, I used to, you know, play team sports a lot. And, you know, that that had the other stuff that comes with it, the camaraderie and, you know, the socialising, the competition and all the other stuff I used to enjoy. Um, as you get yeah. older, you know, you, 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 you're less able to do that stuff. Um, you know, and, and particularly on my, you know, my main love was rugby. So, you know, you, your body doesn't particularly last long when you're playing competitive rugby. Um, I, I, I do coach at the club that I spent, you know, the best part of uh, twenty or so years at now. Um, and my son goes to okay. the uh, so club. Yeah, then coach. Yeah, and I've done some coaching previously. I've done I've done some other stuff with the club. You know, raising funds. You know, there's a a, a really competitive first team there. They they play a national one in the UK, and um, okay. and you know that takes some money to run. Um, but we also have got a, a really healthy minis and junior section, and I got involved in doing some doing some training there, which I quite enjoy. My daughter's a avid horse rider, so I like being you know I like being her groom and and driver and all the stuff you know that comes with that, and yeah. seeing her progress with the with the horse stuff that she does. Um, what what I tend to do mostly nowadays for myself, if I was going to be you know really. Um, selfish I, I go fishing you know i i, I yeah. spend some time um I, I do the sort of fishing where you might stay out you know depending on what time you've got available for for days on end you know not just during the daytime you may stay overnight on, on a regular occasion mm. um that really feeds that outdoor thing um i love nature mm. and um and it's also got a problem solving element to it, which you really, really enjoy as well. Oh, so I guess, I guess, you know, coming back to your point really around, you know, how do you deal with the motivational side of things? I, I, I listen to myself, you know, yeah. I think you learn after a while that 
you know yourself better than anybody else does and and there are some signs you need to look out for and um mm. and and I think you know with that I've I've really learned not to talk to myself negatively um it's a hard one it's a hard one isn't it yeah a lot of people um in their own heads um you know are, are saying the worst things about themselves to themselves and fueling cool, yeah. fueling negativity um I, I, I will often just remind myself that these things come in cycles and, you know, your um, your mind and your body is telling you something. It's time to go and do something about it, you know. Um, you know, go, go and, you know, get, get a night out fishing or, you know, you've got some stuff coming up with the kids, you know, from a, a point of view of the, the sport or, or the riding or whatever it might be. Or, you know, my wife is, is always, um, you know, wanting to be at the gym and, you know, encourage me. She she tried to do some uh, PT stuff sometime back because she's so into it. So there's there's a host of those things that I'm really mindful of that I tend to lean towards when I'm feeling that, and they tend to fix me and you know put put me back on track. <laughs> that, that that combination of filling the cup up, you know, from the the self yeah the self stuff from yeah fit and fitness, and again outdoors is that is a very common thing. Yeah, that in one of the other episodes um, that we conducted. Um, one of the ultra, ultra runner that we interviewed, the first thing he said is, my exercise has got to be early, it's got to be outdoors, yeah. and I've got to get that cup of coffee in early as well. So it's a, it's a similar theme, of, you know, caffeine, fitness, fresh air, is, is, you know, it's an obvious one, but we all have that too. Well, I'm not, um, I know I'm not going to um, record this memory exactly, um, but I do know that studies have been done in relation to the way in which you can relieve stress. And um, one of the ways is by using um, your spatial awareness. So being in a situation where you hone in on a spot, you can do it in the house, um, Mm. where you hone in on a spot, you stare at it for a point of time, and then you start becoming very aware in your ability to open up your spatial view so looking at the spot but also being aware of what's around you um it has a lot of terms of reducing your stress levels now of course it's no surprise that if you step out of your house into the outdoors you know you've got this spatial um scenario so it's changing yeah nature's there to yeah to de-stress you and i think you know from that perspective um i think it's super healthy to get out do stuff and um and and you know yes uh great um great example as i said to you you know getting out in the morning with the dogs and you know there's almost like no there's no excuse not to walk your dog right you can't not do it there's no no wrong in that bed and you know particularly no. my two because they're you know they're, they're not particularly passive when it comes to not what they they'll dog you until you take them so i think yeah. getting out there is is so doing the morning thing I, I can't even wait until the evening to walk them. So it's just you're forced to do it. And um, we always talk about it, right? Because you see so much when you're out. But my wife and I will always report back on, oh, it was lovely up the hill today. You know, the sun's rising or, you know, the, the, the way the view was. The leaves change. Yeah, it's just nice. And you kind of feed that back as part of your, your morning routine. But, yeah, that's that's the way I would normally deal with that. Very nice. And... and- you talked about obviously you like the challenge and you, you don't want plain sailing as, as those problems occur. You like the, the puzzle, as it were. Are, are, would you say you're quite an adaptable person or a flexible person? And, and if so, have you, have you developed it over time? Um, I, th- I think when I was younger, I I was perhaps more fixed. Um, mm. and, I, and I think that was a lot to do with, you know, I'd grown up in a, um, a hamlet, a small village, and uh, yeah. been, to, been to school, um, you know, in another village and then went to a, a secondary school in town. And I think, I think you know, my, my parameters at the time um, were pretty fixed. And as a result, you know, seeing other things and, and believing that those things were possible weren't necessarily part of my um you know my vernacular at the time so yeah. i think over time what i found is that 
much as possible, you know, believe in the art of the possible. Um, my, yeah. parameters, my parameters have, you know, pushed uh, wider and wider. And I think, I think naturally as a result, I found myself in situations where one's had to be adaptable and flexible and show agility as part of the, the makeup. Because you know, if you think about it from a point of view of just even within the, um, you know, the, the, the recruiting industry, for example, uh, you know, where I've been around for some time, I think it was within a year and a half, two years, I moved into management. But after I left my first firm, um, I never went to a startup again. I always mm. went and went somewhere that was established in some way, shape or form. And that was whether I was I was there to fix something or grow something, um, you know, or eventually, you know, having gone through a process of doing that for another 20 years there or thereabouts, um, with with various firms, um, then being in a situation where I become an advisor and a um, a coach for other business owners and leaders, and you know you're getting into other environments very very quickly. And part of the skill set in that situation is being able to understand very quickly what the environment is, understanding how to adapt to that environment, understand you know how your knowledge and your skill set applies in that environment, but also what you can learn from it. So I think I think actually over the time it became a learned thing. Um yeah. you know, and it and it applied in every setting. So yeah. you know, I think I think to a certain extent, dictated by you know decisions when I was younger and 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 work. Um and as a result, faced with new things, you know, have felt that actually ra- rather than being dissuaded from being flexible and agile and you know actually i've been rewarded yeah. for being able to do that and um and yeah. of course, you build on it as a result you learn how to do it more and more and i would say it's probably one of my my core capabilities it's 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 funny you use the word fixed at the start i think a lot of people we all, all have a, a degree of that don't we? We, we we struggle with it and that ability to start to implement flexibility, adaptability, move quickly, learn quickly, like you said about the environment, it could be, it could be a, I, I think people forget it can be a learned skill through time. I think people yeah, feel I mean, that. Yeah, I mean, I would definitely, flexible or not. definitely agree. Yeah. I think, well, the, um, I think it was Carol Dweck, who's the, uh, the yeah. uh, core of the growth mindset. And, mm. um, and, if you think about it as a as a formula, you know she essentially is saying you, you've all got brains and talent, yeah. Um, but if you bring dedication and hard work, you know you you then um, can establish a love of learning and, and resilience, right? And mm-hmm. and I think I think I probably started off, you know, at, and, and at school probably was you know if I think back. I probably didn't put anywhere near the amount of hard work in, you know, probably mm. didn't put anywhere near enough um, effort, uh, dedication in that, that perhaps others did. Um, yeah. But, but in actual fact, you know, pennies dropped for people at different stages of their life and, and, it, and yeah, it, dropped for me, it dropped for me in the work setting. And, and mm. the moment you get, you get rewarded and you see that reward, you work out that that's a good formula to follow, right? So, um Hold in on it. Yeah. You know, I'm a big I'm a big I'm a big fan of the growth mindset approach and you know and the fixed mindset tends to be you know to have the tools and the circumstances but tends not to apply you know the effort required right and and actually yeah. naturally it's the combination that gets you the gets you the movement in life. So I think I think yeah you know I would say um, I went from fixed to you know to growth, and and I did it as part of my nice. my learning in 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 adult workplace really. Nice. I think I think it's a really good point. I think you know for the listeners it'd be a really really crucial points for them to acknowledge. I think we can all be guilty of being fixed on different things, different subjects even. So it's a nice reminder for me as well. Um, from a you touched on the word there. You took me to my next question quite nicely. You said about resilience. Having tackled what you've tackled as, as, a, as a business leader in various forms, what tips would you give somebody to develop resilience 
determination, handle setbacks? Um, well, first things first, you know, you've got to you've got to have all your senses turned on. Uh, mm. As I said to you earlier on, you know, that sense of calm that we were discussing, it tended to be accompanied with me just stopping and taking everything in, you know, okay. listening and, um, and, and, you know, watching, asking questions, you know, just making sure that I understood the context of the mm. situation that, that I was faced with. And I think foundationally, I've got a really good value set, you know, so, and I trust myself, you know, so. Yeah, it's not a lot, right? Yeah. Yeah. So you end up in a situation where you say, well, when you make a decision, where is it coming from? You know, yeah. how you, when you look at a scenario and it's always coming from a good place. I don't, I don't ever make decisions that come from a bad place. So, yeah. you know, and, and, and accepting that, you, you're not always right. You're not, not always get it right. So I think, I think you know, I I'll, I will always um, bang on with people, and you'll you'll have heard it heard me say it about the power of now, and you know, making yeah. sure that you don't procrastinate on things because I think ultimately you've got to be able to very quickly um, use those senses to work out what the context of the situation is. You you take your appropriate time to consider that, and then apply your experience and if you don't have experience you know one of the things that i've i've gifted myself is the ability to say well actually on trend when you didn't have experience and you made decisions they were on the whole good ones so yeah. you know back, so back, back yourself. yourself yeah yeah back yourself on the decision so i think in those scenarios um you know what i try to do is engender the sense of trust from others in me that you know that I'm capable and able to make decisions in those scenarios, um, that they can defer to me if they need to, but also um, over time, just teach people really that um, if you stop and, and and actually you know there was a, a program I went through which I found was exceptionally useful for helping one understand the positives to reflect on. It was a uh, uh, program called the Thrive Program. Uh, Rob okay. Kelly, um, Rob, Rob Kelly's an ex um, psychologist, um, dealt with the worst sort of things that you see in the human world wow. at the children level, things that they've been through. Okay, and um, and he'd recognised that you know he'd seen these thousands and thousands of uh, children and. You know, he'd gone through the process of counselling with them and recognising what the problems were, but he wasn't necessarily um, equipping them with the toolkit to then go on and, you know, and thrive. Yeah, and only half, the, half the puzzle, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So unlocking, but not necessarily equipping. And um, anyway, he ended up, as a result, recognising that there was something about that. And he designed a programme where it would enable you to equip yourself accordingly and, and, and in any walk of life and it revolves around having the right type of belief system and understanding how belief systems work and you know then basically creating uh, a sense of power and control in your approach to things anyway one of the things that um he teaches you today and it's part of the thing that I, I mentioned to you earlier on you know part part of the thing that i might walk up the the hill with my dogs i'll be thinking to myself you know what you know? What what something I've done the day before? Recognizing the good things, you know. Think about the um, whatever it might be. You know, mm-hmm. um, I was I was there to watch my you know watch my boy play football, or I was there to pick yeah. my horse up, you know, or or drive her to somewhere with a horse, or I was there to help yeah. somebody at work around you know a, a problem that they've had and they've been worried about, and how to walk them through it just recognizing all of those things in a, in a given period that if someone was looking at you and they were talking about you, you almost going to take yourself in that third person view and <laughs> think about, you know, that guy's a good dad and, you know, that guy's a, a the really... Full, the full story. Yeah, a really great colleague and, a, that, you know, that guy thinks about people before he makes a decision. And so I think in that regard, you end up making notes 
about these things. And what you realize after a time, because you, you drop stuff off the bottom of these notes, you, you might have 10 things you always keep and, mm. um, and you're replenishing it every day. But what you realize before you know it is that inadvertently you're a good person, you're doing good things, you're making good decisions, people would look to you, um, you know, in a trust-based relationship and a loyalty base, yeah. whatever it might be. So I think I think in those scenarios, you end up in a situation where you recognise that much of what happens to one is under one's control. And yeah. naturally, if you spend too much time worrying about what other people think about you or worrying about other things that you're out of control of, um, it's energy, emotions, time wasted, where you could be doing stuff that you can control. So I, mm. I suspect, I suspect, you know, that's really. I've always, I've always felt like a resilient character. Um, I've always been in situations that would call on resilience. Um, but what I've found is by also going through this program that um, I've been able to er- eradicate some of the other things from my thinking that would enable me to be really, really clear also on how to identify the smaller things that really, you know, you need to remember sometimes, you forget sometimes when, yeah. you know, when when you're looking at yourself and you're thinking whether or not you've got the toolkit or the experience you need to be able to do the things that you're going to need to do. So from, from that point of view, um, you yeah, know, I, I would just spend time with an individual um, reminding them, you know, Mm. Telling, telling them about the things they've forgotten and um, and also just dispelling the, the mindset really of picking out the one thing out of a hundred that you did wrong um, yeah, uh, yeah. And, and trying to and trying to remember all the impact of all the other positive things it's a, it's, it's a weirdly easy such an easy one to do isn't it the picking the picking the one wrong thing we, we we've all we've all done it we all have a tendency to do it and it's very easy to, to not be positive and then that, that that fuels a group it fuels an office it can fuel a family uh, yeah i think i think it's a, a nice mechanism it's a very very simple but really effective mechanism it goes along with gratitude a little bit but it's also giving yourself a little bit of context isn't it you know you, you can actually say you know what's the real version here what's the full story yeah. Um, so yeah, I like it. Yeah. And and what would your your view on that that positivity in, uh, be in, in in a workplace context? What would that look like to you? <clears throat> well, uh, you know, I, I never I never start with no in my in my head. <laughs> um, I think I think I think I've learned that anything's possible. You know, if I look, if I look back to you know. When I was 23, 24 years old, and and I look back to what I was doing back then, oh. the me back then would have no concept of the me today. Okay, and when yeah, and it, and, and, it, and I could put you know whether they whether they're notable or otherwise, but I can put all my war stories in between here and there, and the the, the things yeah. I've I've done, places I've been, um, you know. Things I've achieved. All the pages of the things. story. Yeah. yeah I, just wouldn't re- I just wouldn't have recognized that. Right. So I think from a point of view of, of looking at life in general, I think anything's possible. Um, which is which is further fueled by some of the things you see people do, you know. I I'm yeah. I'm always um, amazed uh you see people, you know, we'll we'll see on TV or whatever, someone who's been in the military and you know they've They've had a, a, a lost a limb, or you know, they've something's happened to them, right? That you, you right. couldn't imagine, or you couldn't see your way through. Yet they've just climbed their third mountain, or you know, or whatever it is. Right? And I just look at it and think to myself, you know, the human spirit is really important. Um, yeah. And, and I think, and I think, you know, ultimately in the workplace, I, I I always look at it from a perspective of, you know, it's in my power to be positive. You know, yeah. It's 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 not for someone to take that away from me. It's for me to manage it, and and ultimately, um, the outcomes are linked to how I approach situations. And coming back to that point earlier on, really, which is if you've got the combination of, you know, the the resources, you know, the yeah. circumstances and the effort, um, there's no reason why you can't achieve things. So I always look at it from a 
a point of view of, you know, that those, those things could be achieved. But I also think it's really, really important in your language with people, you know, being intentional, um, yeah. you know, talking to people and showing people by actions that you're with them on things. You know, it's it's a it's very easy to be, um, I guess, you know, one of those leaders who stands at the back and pushes people forward and, you know, whether that's then yeah. climbing out pitches or otherwise, you know, um, not necessarily be seen to be being involved. That's just not that's just not how I see it. You know, I like to be amongst people, I like to help, I like to, you know, be passionate about what I do because, you know, it's the way I feel, but I also know it, it positively impacts other people. And hopefully uh, it rubs off. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And of course if 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 just in that interaction somebody walks away and is just, you know, they've got that thing that they need from somebody, then yeah. And I feel like, you know, I'm playing my part in a culture. We're really lucky to have the culture we have in our business. And um, mm. it, and it's and it's built up and it's deep, uh, as well as the mm. fact that, you know, we select people to come into it that bring something to the table as well. But, you know, from a point of view of the type of work that we do, you know, you, you need to apply yourself like that all the time. You know, you can't take your yeah. foot off that, you know, that, Gas. If you want to be the best service company in your in your sector, if you yeah. want to be the company that you know achieves the the growth that we're aiming to achieve, if you want to be um, you know the best at the job you do, they are all things that you need to look at you, and you personally bring yourself to, whether it's as an individual or as a team um, effort. So I'll always looking for that, those those few extra percent, and as you say, that positive mindset is the first step. Yeah, I think first step, I think, you know, I, I love the 1%, um, whether you look at it yeah. in, in practice, you know, with the, the different um, types of sporting scenarios or uh, business scenarios, you know, the Southwest Airlines, or you look at the, you know, um, Clive Woodward Rugby or David Browsford with the Sky Cycling Team, they're all examples yeah. of, of where people have worked out those small elements. I think Matthew Side wrote, about it you know it's a um it's the, the way in which you're able to break things down and, and then how you approach what you do with it i think is the uh, is the yeah. and you know particularly in industries where there's not a lot to separate one business from another because you know uh there are um you know models essentially that are very very simple you you know you end up you end up in a situation where actually culturally you can be felt and, um, yeah. and, and, you know, have a great model, apply that model. But at the same time, culturally, if, if people feel, you know, the culture within the organization and they feel the interactions and as we position ourselves, you know, our guiding principle is legal positivity. And, um, yeah. and when you look at our value set, which we, we use um, an acronym called PROFESS, um, where the first word is positivity. Yeah. Um, you yeah. know, ultimately, even when we do staff surveys around the subjects, you know, people most relate to positivity. So I think, I think yeah. ultimately, um, you know, you want every st- stakeholder to experience that, you know, in every interaction, in any way that they interact with you. So I think from, from that point of view, every one of us have got a, a responsibility to uphold it. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, if you, you, you leave, yeah, definitely, and leaving me with, um, leaving the room to go and try and do that, yeah, you're giving me that 10% as well, that, or that 1% for sure. Um, one of our other themes at Moria Bond is obviously uh, progressing lives everywhere. So as a, as a last question, what would progression, what does progression mean and look like to you day to day? Um, well, um you know, I've got a career where I've progressed, you know, so I've, I've progressed in terms of my responsibility. I've progressed in terms of the situations I'm faced with. Um, I've progressed in terms of quantum of business. Um, I've progressed in terms of jurisdictions in which I operate. And so there's a number of different things I might look at and say, they're all progression elements. Okay. Um, I think if I was looking at it, if I was looking at it from, Um, other perspectives I think that you know developing what I do day to day 
is quite important yeah. for me um, and doing it better. In fact, it's in fact it's massively important for me to continually improve in 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 that regard. Um, I think I think conversely, less about me. You know, I I classify myself as a as a servant leader. You know, I'm much more geared yeah. towards wanting other people to succeed, and as much as you know, I I um, enjoy doing well. You know, I I enjoy more other people doing well, and um, yeah. And, equipping people to do so and um watching them do it is um is is massive for me whether that's you know in the workplace you know i've i've operated as a as a business leader i've operated as a as a leadership coach you know i've Mm -hmm. I've done different things that cause me to develop people and i've seen i've seen i mean literally hundreds of people um, develop on you know under perhaps my guidance or the guidance of people who work for me and th- there's nothing actually better than seeing that happen it's really really satisfaction cool. yeah it's a really cool thing to be part of and yeah. um, and, see, and seeing people really grow into who they're going to be and you know um, spread their wings and um, add value to the environment based on the fact that you know they've they've come to that place of experience with their own style I think it's just nice. brilliant. Um, I love seeing it outside of work. You know, I've seen my kids come through and you know, I've got a 27-year-old daughter who's brilliant at the job she's got. You know, she works really hard. She's making her own way, yeah. Making her own way in life. I love seeing that. You know, she, she got promotion recently. I was like, you know, chuffed the bits for her. Um, Very nice. You know, I see, I see, you know, my kids progress at school and – learning different things and being capable of doing new things all the time. It's one of the times Those actually moments. kids developing things, you know, and being able to pick up new skills and stuff, you know, it's just so intense because they're it's happening to them in a short time frame that that you get so much reward as a as a parent, but also, you know, places like the rugby club, for example, when I'm developing other people, you you just get to see that return. So I think I think, you know, watching people push their own parameters, watching people um, listen, you know, that cause effect, listen, apply and and get the return yeah. on that is something which never gets old, ever gets old. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and it and it and it won't, you know, for me, it won't be something that I think I'll ever um, grow tired of. And and to be in a business where our purpose is progressing lives everywhere. Is um, is about as perfect a place to be, really, to um, to, to, to you know talk about that subject and and really see it not just in terms of what we commit to inside the business um, for one another, or what we might commit to in relation to our stakeholders such as clients or consultants or yeah. candidates, you know, dependent on our consulting and our our staffing brands. Um, but also the stuff we do for our communities, you know, watching the people that, that sure. need yeah. help and watching them progress and, um, yeah. and and how we might enable that. So very proud to be part of all of that stuff. And and I think, you know, back back really bring it back around to what it means. Um, aside from relationships, you know, progression mm. means everything. It's a great way to finish. Progression means everything. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure, David. Thank you. No problem. Thanks for hosting.